The idea of fourth generation blockchains may seem slightly premature, considering we're yet to truly solidify the third generation into the history books. But it's those that have the fourth generation in mind, whilst they build out the current infrastructure, who are going to be best placed to succeed in delivering the next generation of cryptocurrency technology. With IOHK and Cardano, thoughts to the future have always been at the very foundation of their research. We see this with examples like Mithril and input endorsers, and how it's going to change the game when it comes to truly delivering a sustainable and scalable proof-of-stake blockchain. In today's video, I've got some information that offers a brief look into the future of technology, and why it just might be Cardano that's going to deliver a fourth generation blockchain, revolutionising global infrastructure beyond what is recognisable today. Welcome back for today's instalment of Cardano Insights, delivering a fast-paced bite-sized roundup of the all-important Cardano news and ecosystem content from the past 24 hours. So join me as I explore exactly what's been happening at the very pulse of Cardano. So let's get straight into it. So first up, and yesterday in Washington, the US House of Representatives on Agriculture, who oversee the CFTC, held discussions on the future of digital asset regulation. As expected, Charles delivered confidently and represented the industry as a collective in fine fashion. Notably, never mentioning Cardano once, but instead clearly demonstrated his care for the entire industry and determination to find common ground, pushing for productive and progressive conversation. For the most part, focus was centred on the CFTC and SEC, and specifically which one of these entities is capable of handling the regulation of cryptocurrency. I think for anyone that tuned in, it's clear that even at this early stage on the journey to regulation, the crypto industry is going to be in a much better place regulated by the CFTC rather than the SEC. What stuck out for me here was how when questioned, Charles kept bringing the conversation back to let's see what you as potential regulators want, what you like and dislike, and use this as a starting point to build upon. Highlighting that if we understand what you want and what you're trying to achieve, then we as experts in cryptocurrency can provide the solutions to get there. Of all of the committee, it was a certain Mr. Scott that clearly had the most aversion to cryptocurrency and levied the question on how in fact could you possibly regulate 20,000 cryptocurrencies stating that in his view it was impossible, and stated that he'd be very concerned if the average American had more than 5% of their investments in crypto. Charles broke it down perfectly for him, highlighting that one of the powers of the industry is that regulation can become algorithmic. So rather than thinking from an angle of which person is going to sit down and regulate all these cryptos, what you have to do is look at what tools do you have at your disposal. Charles went further to confirm that what's magical about cryptocurrency is the transactions themselves can carry metadata and identity. So rule makers can take a step back and say these are the things that we care about and we can make sure in the systems that those things don't settle or clear until those specifics are present. So it's really a thing of what you as regulators care about and we as technologists can create a self-certification system so that in the rarer event that anomalies occur, the regulator can then investigate those items specifically rather than every crypto that is adhering to those predefined standards which dramatically reduces workload. At times it seems that the government officials have identified the problem, but not what they're trying to achieve or what outcome they're trying to obtain. It was definitely a great play from Charles to focus in on this aspect and get them thinking along these lines. Whilst there are many people in Washington that are definitely anti-crypto, what stood out for me is the fact that the House of Agriculture in particular are genuinely trying to help, and it would seem that they just need to catch up on where the crypto space is currently at. From here, I'm confident that they will eventually create the type of regulation that isn't going to stifle innovation. Speaking on a talk card on a Twitter space afterwards, Charles also made the good point that at times it feels like he's representing the entire industry, highlighting that you start making progress with lawmakers, then terror collapses or Celsius collapses, and that really sets you back. Charles also explained that he noticed on crypto Reddit lots of posts about him speaking in front of Congress, and people saying that he's the worst person to represent the industry, when above all it's Charles that stepped up, and for instance where's Vitalik and the rest of the big leaders in the industry, there's not a lot of resources that these guys are willing to put into creating meaningful dialogue with the US government. But what Charles has found in engaging with the US government is that there's actually a lot of allies there who want to see the industry be well functioning, innovative and continue to grow. I probably haven't done Charles or the committee hearing as a whole a great service in my brief review, so I'd urge you to go check it for yourself, which is linked in the description below. Now to something that I know will get the juices flowing for every Cardano enthusiast. As for me, from all of the Cardano content you could have consumed yesterday, it was this that shared the most insightful thought-provoking discussion. Charles Gate crashed the Talk Cardano to me Twitter space, and near the end of his 30 minute or so appearance, one of the listeners asked for his thoughts on fourth generation blockchains, and his answer offered some real insight to where not only blockchain, 
for Cardano may be heading over the next 5 to 10 years. In his view, the idea of a fourth generation blockchain would require a multi-resource consensus mechanism. Alongside it, complete DAOification of all governance of the system, with an embrace of quantum computing. Those three things are enough of a change to justify a fourth generation blockchain. Charles highlighted that IOG is a paper called Multi-Resource Consensus Algorithms, which created a framework to show how to do exactly that, basically combining consensus mechanisms together, like proof of work and proof of stake. And why would you want to do this? Because each consensus algorithm has a collection of trade-offs, so you want to combine them in a way that you eliminate all the trade-offs and get all the upside. This, whilst extremely difficult in practice, as there's a lot of care and thought that goes into it, in the not-so-distant time horizon is achievable. In terms of DAOification of the entire infrastructure means that you put in more AI, having lots of organisations that run completely as smart contracts. And he believes that we're getting closer to this, but stated there's probably another year of research on the Cardano side before we get there. His desire to get to a stage of self-governance where the system runs itself, reaches total decentralization and total autonomy, was evident and will be extremely powerful if achieved. Then speaking of bringing crypto in the quantum world, in his view is on two layers, quantum communication and post-quantum crypto. So how do you make crypto immune to quantum computers? Well, you can do this by taking post-quantum algorithms and integrating them. Charles summarized that these three elements will result in enough material change to the heart of the system that would result in a new generation of cryptocurrency. Now for the part that really got me excited, he stated that it would be a lot of fun to build something like that, and he believes that we're about five to 10 years out from the evolution to get to that point, as we still have a long road to go with the third generation cryptocurrencies. He continued stating that we now just starting to get truly scalable protocols, and when input endorsers comes out for Cardano, it's going to be game changing. It's really going to show people how to scale a proof of stake protocol in a responsible way, unlike the bizarre Oracle chain Ethereum is trying to do. This will uniquely take advantage of Mithril and the EUTXO model in an elegant way. Now, not to overhype this, as quite rightly he pointed out that there's lots more work to do on smart contracts, standards, interoperability, certified software, and with basic governance until we actually get there. Charles stated that we have another three to five years in the third generation, and that we're pretty much ready to move into the fourth, and then it's that generation that will probably get crypto to the global scale level, meaning billions of users. Interestingly, in the discussion, he also highlighted the question of when will we have infrastructure becoming basically decentralized? He explained that's why a fourth generation needs to have multi-resource consensus, because you can put proof of storage, useful proof of work, and proof of bandwidth into that algorithm, and basically you can completely replace Amazon Web Services with a decentralized system that uses a single token to represent all of it. To close this segment, Charles made it clear of his desire to see Cardano evolve into that direction, and if the community wants him to do that, then he'll write a proposal after he's done with the current Cardano roadmap, and the third generation is solidified, emphasizing it'll be real fun to spend the next five to 10 years building that. He added at that stage with all the amazing capabilities of Cardano, they could write a thousand research papers and 10 million lines of code and continue to do remarkable things, but this would be up to the community to decide. I'm pretty sure I can speak for the entire Cardano community when I say that we'd welcome the idea of Charles pursuing fourth generation blockchain and the idea of infrastructure becoming completely decentralized with Cardano. And I'd be confident of all of the actors in the crypto space he's probably the one that you could bet on getting it done. Next up, and recently we discussed that IOHK had really started to ramp up the material being published surrounding the technology behind Cardano and its impactful use cases. Yesterday, IOHK gave us this blog providing an overview of the research enabling smart contract support on Cardano, which takes a closer look at Cardano's innovative EUTXO model and how it facilitates more efficient smart contracts. The article starts by addressing the core differences between UTXO and the account-based models of Bitcoin and Ethereum, highlighting the UTXO model guarantees security at the core level of financial activities but has limited support for smart contracts, and Ethereum chose the account-based model explicitly to facilitate more expressive smart contracts. The article then delves into how the extended UTXO model works using Pluto smart contracts and Marlowe financial contracts in a very straightforward five-minute read. I'd definitely recommend anyone who wants to understand this in more detail, check out the full blog linked in the description below. Finally, and yesterday we briefly covered the World Mobile and IOHK AMA that's coming up on the 28th of June, but well, we also got this short two minute video from World Mobile that's definitely worth a watch. This is Mickey Watkins' World Mobile pledge at the World Telecoms Development Conference, whereby World Mobile made their clear intentions to have 1 billion people connected by 2030. I've linked the video in the description below if you want to check it out. So that's it for another installment of Cardano Insights. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video and found value in the content. And if you did, please be sure to comment, like, share and subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. We'll be back soon with your daily roundup. And until then, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. And as always, keep it Cardano.